is we are going to have uh, uh, a next uh, this very session and it is going to be on post 309 uh, as a way of introduction or reintroduction uh, the course title is uh, comparative realism and it's a two credit load uh, unit and um, my, still, my name still remains Suleiman Muhammad Bashir from the Department of Political Science International Relations, University of Abuja. Now, the, the general overview of uh, the lecture. From the word go, the course title, Comparative Federalism. What is Comparative Federalism? Now, before we can go into the detailed discussions of the word comparative or the topic comparative federalism, it is important for us to uh, first and foremost uh, understand uh, the concept of federalism in its uh, uh, details. Now, uh, federalism is an idea that was actually, you know, uh, brought up in order to accommodate unity in diversity. Communities, societies, and enclaves that were hitherto independent and autonomous would at some point in their history discover the need to come together into a particular union and form one single political entity for the betterment of the entire federating unit. Now, the general overview of this particular course is aimed as, first and foremost, the course aimed at introducing the students to uh, comparative federalism, the second issue is it aimed at introducing students to the genesis and political dynamics of political or federal political systems, Nigeria, Africa, and the globe. Now, the next thing is to identify theory and the practice of federalism. Students, of course, will also be exposed to the suitability of the federal system to the solution of the problem of nation building. Issues of economic development and representation in Nigeria, Canada, and USA shall be thoroughly uh, discussed in this particular course. And as well as the issues of modernization. Now, every nation on earth try as much as possible to fast track development of its people. A one major reason why nations federate or come together under a federal union is to ensure that first and foremost to you know expand their opportunities of developing at a very faster or quicker pace. Nations of the world have actually attempted various models of federation. Some have succeeded, others are still in the level of trying, while others are on it. And there is the fact that is usually said within the academia. And scholars of federalism have actually acknowledged the fact that there is no federalist arrangement that is devoid of its inherent challenges. In other words, federalism or federal practices world over are not uniform. As such, you should expect that there will be some differences in the practice of federal system in one particular country from another. Now, these are the learning outcomes. At the end of this particular session, or the course as a whole, it is expected that students should be able to define the concept of federalism. Students should as well 
be able to identify the various theories and their proponents of federalism. Students should as well know the operations of federal system and make a comparative analysis of uh, various federal systems globally. Let's now go into the discussion or the nitty-gritty of the discussion on the concept of federalism. This is a quotation from Yusuf Bala Usman, and he says, I quote, The survival of the Nigerian Federation 36 years after independence, in spite of the various turbulences that characterize its operation, is a clear pointer to the fact that the 1914 was indeed not a historical mistake as usually alleged. Federalists all over the world are of the view that Nigeria is indeed a model in Africa's federal studies and historical celebration in League of Federations. In other words, or in, in a way of preferencing this particular quotation from Yusuf Bala Usman, Nigerian federalism or the operations of Nigerian federalism has actually or is celebrated world over as one of the most successful federalist experience in spite of its turbulences. This is a clear indication to the fact that the operations of Nigerian federalism is characterized with a lot of challenges. But in spite of these challenges or despite these challenges, Nigerian federalism has continued to operate from uh, its inception to this very moment. According to Jane Bodin and Hugo Grotius, in some of their early writings in federalism, the essence of federalism is that it is a voluntary form of political union. They believe that it is a form of government where separate entities, regions, and provinces come together to form a large political entity. What Grotius and Jim Bodin are trying to point out to the, to the fact that the essence of federation, of federalism, is for nations to uh, voluntarily come together. Like I said initially, it is a voluntary you know, way of submitting your legitimacy, your authority, as well as your sovereignty. But that does not in any way take away your independence and your autonomy. What I'm trying to say in essence is this, that the fact that uh, hitherto communities, societies that were formerly independent and autonomous, the fact that they have come together make a single political union does not now make them to be as an object of ridicule or to be treated without any element of regard. Now, in further to this, the central government is, however, given the mandate to rule over all persons and institutions. That is according to Apodri, 1976. In contrast, Osun Tokun, 1979, explains Nigerian federalism as a deliberate design by the British government, which came into being as a result of two reasons. One, geographical and historical factors. Two, the British government deliberately imposed the federal system on Nigeria in order to maintain a neo-colonial control. That is the beauty of academics. Each scholar is at liberty to empirically take a position as far as any issue is concerned. And this is why Osum Toku believed that the making of Nigerian Federation was not actually a decision by Nigerians. Rather, it is a decision by our est 
while colonial masters, that is the British government, in order to facilitate their political, economic, as well as administrative convenience. Now, according to so, uh, Osutoku, he is of the opinion that perhaps because of the experiences after colonialism, because uh, in the aftermath of uh, colonialism, of course, neocolonialism took place or took over. And by this neocolonialism, it is a sort of subtle way of having a control over the old territories that were under the colonial government. Arguably, the most authoritative explanation of federalism is that, is that presented by one of the iconic researchers of the federal political system in the 20th century by a name Kenneth C. Ware. According to Ware, federalism is a system of government in which there is a division of functions between coordinate authorities which are in no way subordinate to another either in the extent or in the exercise of their allotted functions. By the definition of federalism provided by where, it means that federalism it is a function of coordinated units. In other words, the various units that forms this particular federation will have some level of control, autonomy, and functions to play for the survival of the entire system. Although he identified this central government or the, 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 the division of power in such a manner that the central government will have an upper hand. But nonetheless, other federating units will as well have their own spheres of influence and uh, responsibilities, as well as functions. In achieving this kind of arrangement, where submit that there will be the method of dividing powers so that the general and regional governments are each within a sphere, coordinate and independent, the author also went further to say that no two federalisms are one and the same. This is a clear testimony to the fact that world over there is no government or two governments cannot operate similar federalist structure. Another definition provided by Linda, 1974, he submits that there is no common model of federalism but a rich that depends not only on political structures and processes, but on cultural varieties and socioeconomic problems a society has to solve. His own perspective is this, the, that in every federalist arrangement, the essence is not just the political structure, but there must be some sort of economic, sociocultural, you know, similarities that would propel or make that particular federalist arrangement to work. And perhaps that's the reason why federalist arrangements world over, you find some similarities, you, have, you find differences, and of course, where you can you know, make some, uh, identify some, 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 some gaps. Now, from the foregoing, it is made clear that the practice of federalism is non uh, is, is non uniform. Thus, it is necessary to examine the development and peculiarities of Nigerian federalism or federalism as a whole. The overview of the comparative federalism as a cause, the meaning, definition of federalism, which is what we've just done, and federation or Federal universal application or federation's universal application in Nigeria's perspective. 
what this entails is that we're actually going to look like uh, look at the federalist arrangement universal application as well as a uh, nigerian's perspective and we we'll also look at the theoretical approaches to federalism like it is said federalism is actually a product of one circumstances or the other according to uh, Casey Ware he celebrated thesis in federalism identified constitutional and institutional approach and by this constitutional and institutional approach he meant the one very important factor that must be put into consideration in a federalist arrangement is the uh, the constitution in other words the constitution is expected to categorically spell out the roles functions of all the federating units in order to ensure sanity and progression failure for the constitution to identify these uh, spheres of influence and try as much as possible to make provision an explicit provision that will always you know uh, ensure uh, stability within the political system then there is likely to be uh, you know a failure in that particular federal arrangement and he insisted that institutions like political party structures like legislatures structures like you know uh parliaments and other political structures uh, or institutions are meant to be studied properly and they should be meant to understand their role within the entire political system according to him doing that will facilitate the proper understanding of the union for progress and development the essence of federalism basically is to fast track development and progression in every community and there's this common saying that uh i think it's an adage in nigeria that uh, a tree cannot make a forest this is a clear indication to the fact that the more you come together as a union the more you achieve you know greater height and the more you divide yourself the lesser achievement you experience or record the next approach is the sociological approach and this sociological approach was propounded by williams rica and in his analysis he tried to look at the sociological and anthropo anthropologi anthropological history of communities as one of the major factors that enhance the formation of a federalist arrangement according to william rica families clans ethnic background ethnic communities and groups tribes that were hitherto having some kind of interaction cultural you know uh, interaction historical you know realities like warfare you know issues that has to do with uh, you know the, the 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 background of the people when these things are properly studied when communities have actually gone into war they would have understood their self better and are now placed in a particular position to have a better understanding of each other to begin to have some sort of tolerance with each other and by that it will enhance the possibility of federating and forming a single political union for the development of such an environment and he concludes that uh, the sociological approach plays a significant role in forming or, formate, or forming a federal arrangement and that 
uh, in the event of any achievement of such, when a federalist arrangement is made or achieved on the basis of sociological approach, by looking at the, 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 the historical realities of the people or the communities of federating units, it will go a long way to foster unity, understanding, and collectiveness in fostering development and progression. The next is political approach by William Livingston. Livingston is one of uh, the uh, celebrated uh, scholar in the area of federalism globally. And what he's trying to talk about here is he laid emphasis on the political system. His emphasis is on the political system and that uh, it is only when political system is being studied. What he meant by this political system is, for example, uh, the nature of secession, elections, appointments, as well as, uh, you know, any other process that can bring about the emergence of leaders. Emergence of leaders that will have, you know, authority and capacity to be able to discharge their duties and responsibilities. Leaders that would be able to have, you know, what it takes to fast track or chart a course for the development of their communities. Leaders that are people oriented, not the selfish interest leaders or self interested leaders that would only be interested in uh, furthering their interests at, in, at, at the expense of the majority. <coughs> the last but not the least is the theory propounded by Karl Marx, and it is called uh, the political economy approach. Of course, Marx writing was actually uh, a product of people like Fubach and other scholars who have actually made uh, an incredible research in the area of political economy approach. But mostly writings, especially the classical writings, acknowledge the fact that the political economy approach is actually addressed to uh, Karl Marx. And according to Karl Marx, he said, the political economic system of a nation or communities is what should be looked into or considered or emphasized in the formation of a federal, any federalist arrangement. In other words, Karl Marx is of the opinion that in every society, there are two classes of people. The first class are the leaders. And the second class is the followers. And according to Karl Marx, the state is an executive arm of the bourgeoisie. Marx do not believe in the existence of states. And it is on that basis that he argued that history will end in communism when the dictatorship of the proletariat will be established. In other words, Marx's opinion is that the history of mankind would end, or societies would definitely end in communism. According to him, communism is the best system that should be in practice. And that is why he said, the rivalry between the two classes of the haves and the have-nots the bourgeoisie and the proletariat will get to its apogee or it will get to its peak where a uh, revolution will become inevitable. And when such a revolution takes place, it will lead to a classless society. That classless society is a society where, according to Karl Marx, the resources 
that is in such societies is going to be collectivized and redistributed for the common good of all. But, of course, the approach has actually been uh, 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 critiqued to be too utopian. Meaning that this approach is not a reflection of our societies today. Nevertheless, he has been able to uh, provide a solid background that we can use to understand the working of, of some federalist arrangement. And perhaps by the time we start looking at Nigerianist or Nigerian federal arrangement, certainly the political economy approach is going to be futured uh, such that uh, we will come to terms or understand that uh, why the various call we, we we have or receive various calls of uh, you know uh, renegotiation of the Nigerian entity. While one particular region is calling for resource control, another region is you know arguing for uh, restructuring. Of course, other argument or region are working towards sustaining the the the, the present. Uh, you know, structure. They want to maintain the status quo, in other words. So, uh, these are basically the approaches that uh, students can adopt or use in understanding the rationale for the creation of any federal arrangement. Uh, to, as a way of making a quick recap of our discussions, we've been able to provide uh, various definitions of uh, uh, federal arrangements. Uh, we've uh, examined the, the definition provided uh, by Casey Ware. We have examined Osutome Kun's uh, Osu definition. Each of these definitions lay emphasis on a particular area. So it's expected that uh, uh, students should be able to uh, get in tune with some of these uh, definitions and uh, uh, try to see how they can understand, of course, the approaches that can be used uh, in the study of federalist arrangement. We have a lot. This is just the first session. And uh, uh, to uh, ensure that students uh, have a full understanding of each session, it is good we make it brief uh, to allow a quick or fast digestion uh, so that uh, in our next session, we can see how we can uh, uh, make a, a, a progress. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I wish you uh, a very happy moment. <laughs>